finding my favorite espresso in San Francisco. I'll visit 12 shops in this video, including some roasters north of the Golden Gate Bridge and the non-roasters in the city. Let's do it. Set 5 takes me across the Golden Gate Bridge into Marin County. It's a beautiful area and has some of the best views on the planet in my opinion. First up is Weaver's Coffee and Tea in San Rafael. It's very foamy on top. I mean, it's a huge portion for an espresso shot. That's a lot. It smells pretty roasty, kind of a lively, nutty scent to it. Ooh, it's very warm in temperature. Kind of hard to taste. I'm gonna let it sit for a minute. Interesting. It tastes like a pretty dark roast, like very nutty, very roasty, like a toasted or grilled bread. But there is, it's interesting, you can kind of taste the coffee underneath the roastiness a little bit as well. There's kind of a fruity berry quality. The sweet fruit is such a fleeting part of the experience because it's quickly kind of overwhelmed by the roast. But it's interesting, I'm not used to there being this much depth in a super dark roasted coffee like this. It does taste very clean as well. Like there's very little aftertaste, It's it tastes fresh. There, there's a bright and active component to the flavor but it's not too acidic. Like it doesn't bite. It's, it's definitely not at all unpleasant. This is fascinating. This is definitely a new sort of experience for me. It definitely has that roasty, nutty quality. There is almost a sweetness to it as well. Along the road to Muir Woods is Equator Coffees. Shops across the country use their beans and I've noticed them in a handful of West Coast airports. Ooh, wow, that smells good. It smells sweet, full, balanced. Mm. Ooh, wow. That tastes really good. <laughs> there is definitely a sweetness that's very present up front. It's kind of that sweet almond, like that Blue Moon ice cream sort of flavor. It is rich. It's almost like a fruit salad where there's not a ton of distinctness to it, but it just feels like really fresh and sweet and, and light and delicious. <laughs> Dang, that's really good. The texture is what I would call velvety. It has a richness to it, but it's smooth. It really makes me want to drink more. The acidity is present, but it's definitely not overwhelming. I wouldn't say that this is super high acidity. Maybe like a mango it is included in that bouquet of fruit. <laughs> bouquet. There's definitely a lot here to take in. A lot going on in the flavor. It's really, really nice. Okay, let's talk winners. This one is a pretty clear winner for me. Equator was so good. It had a lot of depth. It had that super sweet kind of fruit salad, mango, very rich flavor profile. There was a lot going on. The texture too was so good. It was like velvety. It really made me want to keep drinking just on texture alone, even though the flavor was also amazing. Whereas Weaver's it was kind of more of that dark roast thing, which is, again, it's still not quite my thing. It was good, and it was unique, and it was interesting. I've never quite tasted an espresso exactly like that, but Equator wins it for me. Set 6 starts across the street from Zuckerberg General Hospital at Newkirk's. It's a deli-style sandwich shop that serves ritual coffee. However, they don't do espresso, it's only drip coffee, so they won't advance in the tournament. I did get a drip coffee, though. You know, I can see why it's on the lists of best coffee, because it tastes like the best version of the coffee you would get from your local, like, sandwich shop. Like, a lot of those places have kind of diner-style drip coffee, where it's it all kind of tastes the same. It's, it's pretty heavily roasted, maybe not super fresh. That's my stereotype at least. But this is like a really, really excellent version of that thing. Ritual coffee, of course, is great. And if, if someone was accustomed to going into their sandwich shop for lunch, getting a sandwich and maybe a coffee, and that's what they were used to, this would feel like the best coffee that you've ever had, probably. And it's well brewed. To be honest, it tastes different than Ritual, the way they brew their own, but this is good. And it's a, this cup is all the way full. It's a lot of coffee for a small price. Next is Bernie's, a beautiful cafe in an old Victorian building in Noe Valley. It smells sweet, kind of roasty. Mmm, interesting. It is pretty roasty, but there's definitely a very lively sweetness to it. I actually taste the sweetness first, and then the roastiness starts to kind of bring a little bit of depth to it. 
It's interesting. For being a little bit more heavily roasted, the the bitterness is very tamed. I really don't get a ton of bitterness. There's still definitely bitter in the flavor profile, but it's not like the overwhelming characteristic. I would say this is more sweet than it is bitter, and that, for me, is a, a pretty unique experience with a, a roasty coffee like this. It finishes fairly clean, too. It's a very quick flavor experience. There's not a lot that really lingers. It's hard to tell what that sweetness is like. It kind of has like a chalky texture, maybe like a mango or like a peach, maybe? Some sort of stone fruit. What do you get if you cross one of my favorite coffee shops with an excellent bakery? You get The Mill, a collaboration between Four Barrel Coffee and Josie Baker Bread. Ooh, that smells good. It smells like earthy and sweet, with a hint of like cinnamon toast. <sighs> oh wow. Ooh, that's really good. It tastes really, really fresh. Like to the point where it almost feels grassy, super light roast, like, like, like almost not roasted enough, but it's just really lively and sweet. You can tell that it comes from a plant. <sighs> mm, yeah, it's very sweet. There is sort of like a, that cinnamon sugar toast sort of flavor, uh, or like cinnamon toast crunch, it's the cereal. <laughs> There's also a hint of that like kind of sweet nut, like that roasted almond. Maybe a blueberry, sort of like a fruit salad almost, like with blueberries and strawberries and raspberries and like a yogurt creaminess. It definitely has that spiced quality, the cinnamon, what I'm calling cinnamon. It's just kind of a, a little bit of a spicy, bright quality to it. There's a lot of depth and a lot of interest. There are a lot of things that are capturing my attention with this one. It's really interesting. I'm enjoying this quite a bit. Axum Cafe was on lists of best coffee in the city, but when I went, they said they were no longer serving coffee. It sounded like a permanent decision, but I wonder if they'll bring it back when they can seat more people inside. All right, let's talk winners. This was a really interesting set. Newkirk's didn't serve espresso. It was good coffee, and I'm glad that I went there. It's a really pretty area, and it's fascinating that it shows up on lists of the best coffee in San Francisco. So it comes down to Bernie's and the Mill. And for me, the Mill just had a really, really complex flavor profile. It was sweet. It had depth to it. It tasted really fresh. Every time I tasted it, I couldn't wait to take the next sip. And I'm definitely the most excited about going back there. And for that reason, the Mill wins it for me. Set 7 brings me to Snowbird Coffee in the Inner Sunset. Oh, that smells really good. It smells like sweet and nutty, almost like a toffee. Kind of like a buttery tint in there too. Mmm, yeah, it smells rich. It's a very pleasant scent. Ooh, wow. It's <laughs> it is very sweet, and the texture is so smooth and velvety. It's also very, very warm. It's a cold day outside, but I feel like this is maybe the warmest espresso that I've had so far. Also, this cup is like almost completely full. It was a very generous pour. It has some berry notes, but it's it's fascinating. It's kind of like a very chalky, velvety texture with that berry, and it's a unique experience. I typically expect those berry flavors to be housed within a thinner texture. This is a really interesting combination. You know, after a few sips, it does start to taste pretty roasty, like a little bit of a darker roast, but there's so much sweetness in it that it almost kind of covered up that, that nutty, roasty vibe. The aftertaste leans more toward bitter, which is typically what I expect, especially from a darker roast, but it's not unpleasant, and it actually cleans up pretty quickly. The aftertaste doesn't linger too much. Next is 5050, a shop with minimalist styling near USF. It smells super balanced, but very lively. Ooh, that's quite nice. It has a tartness right at the front, kind of like a, like a pineapple or a sweet citrus. I'm getting a raspberry flavor as well. It's noticeably sweet, but there, there's definitely an acidity. There's definitely a tartness that kind of balances out the sweetness. The texture is quite pleasant. It's a little bit thinner than Snowbird was, but it feels just smooth and like easy to drink. That's the impression that I get. It's very fresh. Like, there's a hint of that like lemongrass, earthy flavor in here as well. It's quite complex, but nothing is super loud. It's not like an attack in your mouth. It's just a really pleasant evolving experience but the way it goes about presenting all those flavors is very gentle. Trouble Coffee is known for their policy of never allowing mobile phone use inside and also for their giant slabs of toast. They also share a unique and pretty seating area outside. 
It smells like a roastier coffee. Very rich, nutty kind of caramel notes. Ooh, that's quite good. It is fairly roasty, but it's quite sweet as well. It's just that it has like a warming quality. Not like the temperature is super warm, but there's it feels warm in my mouth. <laughs> there's sort of a blueberry flavor to it, but the texture is so soft. Kind of velvety, a little bit of what I call chalky, which I really like. It's just an interesting combination. It tastes fairly fresh as well, which is pretty rare for a darker roast. This isn't like a super dark roast. It's like medium dark is my experience of it at least. It definitely has that roasty nutty quality, but it's not like the only thing that's happening. You can still taste like the coffee, the earthiness, the plantiness behind that roast. All right, let's talk winners. This set was really interesting. It had a lot of combinations of flavor and texture that sort of contradicted my expectations. A lot of very soft, soft yet rich textures. Really pleasant overall. It is difficult to pick between these three because they were similar to each other in a textural sort of way, but their flavors were quite different. And for me, it really comes down to like my initial emotional experience of drinking each one, I felt the most excited about 50-50. It just, it had like this perfect middle ground of a very lively and rich texture, but it also had a sort of clarity to the flavor and a lot going on. I remember the flavor evolving the most. And for that reason, 50-50 wins it for me. Last set in round one starts at Pinhole Coffee in Bernal Heights. It's a boldly decorated shop with great merch that uses coffee from Linnea. It smells really good. It has like a tangy scent to it, very lively. Ooh, oh that's nice. It has a very tame sweetness. Like it's not really juicy and berry-like the way that some other sweet espressos are, but this is really soft, like more of like a, a cookie, like a sugar cookie-like sweetness. That's really nice. Yeah, the texture is super soft and velvety. It really coats my tongue in a way that I find enjoyable. There's definitely some roastiness, but it's definitely not like a dark roast. It's just really pleasant, like kind of caramel notes, molasses, a little bit of like those richer, darker flavors. So the hint of that like gingerbread spice thing, not quite as strong as some of the other places that have been like really gingerbread forward, <laughs> but it's it, it sort of evokes that thought for me. Yeah, that's very pleasant. Piccino is known as one of the best Italian restaurants in San Francisco, and they have an espresso bar attached to their main restaurant. They serve a special Piccino blend from Sight Glass. How is it? it smells quite good and smells similar to Pinhole. Mmm. Just like full, balanced, rich. Ooh, dang, that's really nice. The texture is so good. Really, really pleasant texture. Wow. It's velvety, but it's rich and thicker than most velvety things. There's like a, it's like a combination of different textures that I've experienced before, but I've never experienced something quite like this. It is definitely one of my favorite textures, if not my favorite texture that I've tried so far. The flavor though is a little bit muted. It's very balanced, classic espresso taste, but it's, it's not very intense. It's not nothing, no flavor notes are really jumping out at me. Like I imagine that this would mix well in a milk drink because it doesn't have a ton of character on its own. But if you just want a classic espresso with phenomenal texture, this is the place to be. And honestly, texture almost matters more to me than flavor in my taste experience. The taste is pretty tangy, I would say. There's a, a nice solid acidity up front. Kind of citrusy like a grapefruit, a little bit more on the bitter side, but still quite tasty. That's not a complaint or a criticism. It just has a little bit more of that bitter, citrusy flavor to it. It's quite nice. There is a tiny, tiny bit of a sweetness in there. You really have to hunt for it, but it really rounds out the taste. It's very nice. Word A Cafe in Bayview is a cafe and bar with regular live music nights. I was there on one of the first days they brought live music back since COVID. Mm. It smells very heavily roasted, almost like a drip coffee. That super nutty sort of vibe. It tastes like that super nutty, roasty sort of thing, but it's very mellow. It doesn't have like a bite at the top. There's very little bitterness for how deeply it seems to be roasted. The texture is quite pleasant. It's like smooth and round on my tongue. 
I'm surprised by how little aftertaste there is. It's very clean, especially for this style. There is a hint of a sweetness underneath that roast. It's very delicate. I would say that this is a very mellow tasting espresso overall. Okay, let's talk winners. All three of these ones had really interesting textures and really delightful textures. They were all like super silky and smooth and really rich feeling, and I really enjoyed all of them. For me, Pinhole had the combination of both a really great flavor and a really great texture. Even though I would argue that Piccino had like the best, I think the best texture of all 75 shops that I've been to now, Pinhole had like a very, very, very good texture and a very, very good flavor. And it's that combination that makes Pinhole win it for me. The winners of sets five through eight are Equator, The Mill, 5050, and Pinhole. And with that, round one is complete. I went to 75 shops and now I'm left with 21 contenders in round two. Soon, I'll start back in the South Bay and work my way toward finding my favorite espresso in the Bay Area. Stay tuned for more, and thank you for exploring with me.